Hello and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have a Silver Nocturne versus a Silver Master Yi and the red side is going to invade the blue buff, well the red buff excuse me, and the blue team is going to invade the red buff. So we have a counter invade, perfectly timed, savant level while the top laner does team of things on the top side so no one's really surprised about that. This is a really interesting sort of event that occurs not too often but also a lot often, right? Because I've covered a lot of games talking about bad habits and low elo and things to get to gold. And you'll see like a, a jungler, counter jungle of blue, you know, six, seven, eight minutes. And then the enemy jungler is on the grub and they're literally doing camps side by side and no one sees because of the vision line, no wards, no dragging of camps, no things that they should be doing in terms of thinking about where the enemy jungler is. And then they take the blue and off they go and they take the grub and go, huh, where's my blue? Likewise, this happens as well. We have this invade by the Nocturne here. Okay, he's gonna have 4.7 CS per minute as a farming ult based jungler. How and why? The Yi will have a little bit more, but still not perfect. And so the important part about this and why I'm pausing it is I released a video last week where we were talking about how to deal with these kinds of strategies. And we had a red side Kindred player and a blue side talent player, challenger level career. It's on the main channel, you can go have a look. Invades the blue, Kindred invades the red, they both level 2 bottom lane, the talent gets chunked, moves back to his jungle, Kindred shadows, and that's where the mind games begin with, you know, should I leave, should I just give it up, etc. The Nocturne here is going to basically go for a very standard uh, red into the Krugs. You want to make sure you avoid this vision line, which is the problem, things we talk about all the time. Look at the mini wave, look at the mini wave, now you're seen, now they know exactly where you are. The Yi's going from blue to the grub. Now, because of this, you're watching this, right? Both junglers are now watching this. You must be watching this. You're trading. Oh, well, they're trading. They're burning some. You see what flashes. But Nocturne leaves his Krug camp. And just to quickly announce, all the courses are now available via a membership package. So you can get the gold membership, which gives you every course to get you to gold. You can get the diamond membership, which gives you every course to get you to diamond. The tried membership, which includes a diamond course plus a whole bunch of coaching. And all tiers have huge amounts of free benefits that I'm giving forward to the community, which I'm calling the Jungle Club. So if you've always wanted a course and they're a little bit too expensive or perhaps you weren't entirely sure, now you can get a whole bunch of them for a fraction of the price and join a community filled with high elo, free coaching, the extra symposiums, competitions, one-on-one -on -one sparring, whatever the hell you can imagine. We're going to make this place the go-to for jungle learning and improvement. So head to Vukai.gg to join the Jungle Club today. Nocturne decides not to leave his Krug camp. He should have just finished it anyway. He also should have known he was seen, but now I think he's worried about the E, but the E sees him and says, look, I don't want to fight you. I just don't want to fight you. I don't want to gank bottom line. Oh, we have a Draven with Pry with Morgana. That's fine. Uh, I can go gank this afterwards. I can go full back down to this. I can kind of junk your outside. He has so many options now. He just says, I'm going to do that and let the Nocturne question mark things. Nocturne says, fine. I'm going to go back and finish the Krugs. Now I'm going to get in a mini wave, try and fight a Draven who's level two with Morgana Black Shield. I'm level two as well. Completely compromising himself. Oh, good spell shield. Completely compromising himself. And in the meantime, did you see this? You're watching the minimap while you're watching this. Hello, Master Yi. This is it. Alpha to reposition. And then go straight to the top side here. We see the Nocturne down on the bottom side. Yes, there is a ward there, obviously, at this particular stage. Yone's not going to move because his lane's pushing into him. And Timo's just trolling with the Nar here, so he's not going to move. And he should know. When the Yi crosses mid lane with 12 CS and 3 camps and a blue buff, that he took your whole blue side. So from the Nocturne's perspective, you have only one place to go. Up through here, cut in, and fight the Twisted Fate. Take this first if you want to, but you know that this is all gone. Or you just gank this quickly, directly, try and get a kill, some sums, and then move up to this side to block and defend. The Nocturne screwed himself because of the invade. And so the Nocturne here is now on the Raptor camp, no concerns about the Master Yi, who at this stage is probably just getting out through good angles. There you go. We know he's going to drift up. We know we need to move down. The Nocturne, on the other hand, says, ooh, I like this. Kind of like, hmm, did he? Oh, wait, no, I don't like this. I don't like this at all anymore. He should know that the red is 99% gone, and he just decided to not do the Raptors, because that's a time invest. Also, if you remember, there was literally a ward here where we saw this. So we know it's gone. So what can you do if you beat the Yi 1v1? You move into his camps here and you fist him. You got prior top lane, go and kill him, right? I understand the need for the crab, but the crab will be there afterwards. You can go into the jungle if you want 1v1 and just push him off and take stuff. But if this guy is shoving and basing and Nara is going to come back to lane with TP and Twisted Fate as prior, you don't want to be here now. 
You see, you want the shove and the invade when your laners are positioned in a way that they can either rotate, create pressure, you know, or distracting the laners. But once your laner's coming back to base and he's pushed in, now you're just going to get collapsed upon. So this is a silly play from the Nocturne, doing it after the scuttle crab. That's the most, that's the biggest thing here. Now, we get the fear. Yes, yes, meditate. Yes, meditate. Yes, yes. See what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, part of the whole membership thing is this weekly video. And I kind of build on last week's video talking about this kind of stuff because your ability to read the power thing, right? And make the right decision in real time is so damn important. Here, he decides to go for the Krugs first. Silly move, right? I know we want the Krugs because we want to drift bottom lane, but you're knocked in. So the invade is dumb in the first place. I don't like these reverse invades that they're doing each other. We also know that the Yi... Uh, wow. Okay, he's still, he's still staying on the map. It's like he's going to end up on the bottom side here, but he actually decides to stay on the map, finish off his group of wolves, reset. He's giving up the Scuttle Crab. Okay, fantastic. We like it because there's no reason when your bottom lane are resetting, even if they're going to come back with a bit more cash money gold because of the kill, there's no reason to go for this, right? Uh, because the Nocturne officer will respawn and come out of base a lot quicker than you and with atomization. However, the Nocturne doesn't think about the bottom Scuttle. And... Uh, now we know the E will be on the bottom side. Twisted Fate is shoving in here no mana. Do we gank or do we farm? Do we gank or do we farm? Oh, there's your answer. Ye coming out of base now with Noon Quiver to farm a little bit faster. And we have the Swain and the Twitch in a minion wave getting more garnered, pushed down, and the Nocturne says, all right, I better rotate to this. And we know the E's going to be in the vicinity. We should know at this particular stage. Which hits the slow. We throw the Q. We get rooted, but Swain does some rooting as well. So the Swain clutch play. We applaud and we say, thank you, sir. The Yi, on the other hand, says, yes, I'm going to counter gank this as he should. Can he get in here to kill the Twitch? We well, have to be careful. He's going to flash in to get that alpha. Should be able to do so with one more smackaroo. Obviously, has a new quiver, so he's pretty strong. The Nocturne is just going to stand still first. He will die. He gets a level up. He gets level five. Another root hit by the Swain. That will gonna Q misses. She flashes, but the Q hits from the Swain, exploding her. Now the E is gonna chase down the Swain and she'll get yet another kill. Close. But good. So the Master Yi here invades, sees the Nocturne, doesn't let it compromise his game plan, which is I don't wanna fight you. Right? I'm gonna take all your shit, cut across mid lane, take your red, come back into my blue side, knowing that you're a silver jungler who's not gonna punish me properly. And I'm here to tell you that you can punish them properly. Firstly, don't do this shit anyway. Secondly, if you're going to go red and do the whole quadra, do raptors first so you can time the wave a little better. Because once you've done the red here, the wave is going to arrive now with the, the, the speed increased. You're going to be spotted. So you're going to be spending time standing still. Do this first. Then cut down to this. Because this guy, at worst, is going to do this, this, and move back here, right? Don't think he's going to go for Krugs first. Could he? Yeah, but very rarely will they do that. Now, the Nocturne, in the meantime, as Twitch Fake does go to the top side and kill the Teemo, has respawned here, goes for the Krug camp. He sees this Noct this Nar going back to base and now decides that I'm going to float into the zone. Why is he floating into the zone? Any guesses? Any hypotheses? Why would the Nocturne go here? Now, you could say, well, he died here. So the Yi probably took those cams, went back to base, because if he died with, let's just say, 30 CS, and then I see a bottom lane with 12 more CS, I know the guy probably did this, 4, 8, reset, 12 on the Krugs, and then ganked this lane. You would be a smart cookie if that was particularly the case. If he did this, this, and then came back to the bottom side directly, probably just did the top blue side. Now, is a Silver Jungler thinking about these kind of CS trackings and respawn timers on the clock? No, he's not. So this is a blind level invade to counter jungle. We know very stereotypically that Master Yi's silver junglers will do reds as soon as reds spawn, right? There's a strong focus, a strong tendency, even if one side has more camps than the other, just to go for the buff that's available. Now, the Nocturne's going to get the benefit of this counter jungling. I don't like the trigger, but I like the activity. And I think that's something I say a lot when I'm coaching or as well in the course materials or in the Discord, as I've already said to some people who are silver, in the high yellow junglers we've had around also say this as well. You know, the behavior is important. You know, if you're not doing the behavior at all, that's bad. But if you're doing it at the wrong time, well, that's good. It means it's in your mind. Let's show you the trigger to make sure it's at the right time. Now, sure, if you were tracking the, the Yi completely and you say, look, I know he's going to go for this. You probably might even want to counter juggle me here again and do this. Why don't I just take my crux and investigate 
the blue side here, most likely there are camps available. I'm gonna take them, then I'm gonna ult the mid lane. If that was a predetermined plan, we got him, we got him, we got him. If that was a predetermined plan with the Nocturne did, Chef's Kiss, beautiful, right? I know where Yi's gonna be most likely because of tendencies and they're always obsessed with those things. And I might as well just go and do some counter jungling away from him, get myself back in the game, get that six, and then use it as soon as I can on a chosen lane. Very good. Very, very, very good. Now, unfortunately, the team is 1 2 0. Now it's 2 1 1. And we're going to go to the back of the pit here and try and take the Herald. This is fine, and I'm okay with this, but I am a little concerned about the E coming straight from base for the blue and the checking this. Because the most important thing about this is, right, watch this from the blue team's perspective. See that? That ghost movement is huge. You cannot telegraph that. Now ye should know. Look, when I respawn, that guy's gonna go for the Herald. He's lower on HP, he's lower on mana, he's got a lot of gold in pocket. Drugs, blue side, two kills, mid plus shutdown. The Yi knows exactly where that Nocturne is right now. And he knows he's doing it on lower fumes in terms of the mana. And he knows he has prior from the Nar, because Timo's not in lane. He knows that the Yone also was dead and is not in lane. The Twisted Fate doesn't have ultimate here actually yet, but. Oh dear me. Come on. Please. No. This is what I was saying, right? See a jungle doing blue and crop next to each other. Doing this. Look at this. Can he still get him? No way. You can still get him. Smite. Imagine if he went out of base thinking like that. He didn't see this, did he? He didn't see this telegraphic move. Outside in rules, the most important thing for low elo junglers. Do the thing furthest away from your safety net as possible, right? Hey, I can invade this guy on his blue. I'm gonna do that first and then I'll do the scuttle and fall back. Hey, I'm leaving base here. I saw the Nocturne go to the Herald. Let me go and contest that, kill him, and then fall back to my blue, right? So the Nocturne is having a terrible time of it. And again, sometimes we do the correct things by accident. Broken Clock is right twice a day. And I'm not always saying that because Obviously, when people get to gold and they climb, they are doing the right things. You can see when something was predetermined and when it wasn't, right? Hopefully. But yeah, I'm always trying to get into the minds of the jungler as I'm facing. And when you're coaching, you also have to do the same thing. Because not only are you trying to get into the mind of the player you're coaching, but also to the enemy. And try and create predictable habits that allow you to make the right plays. Now, the Nocturne here goes to this side to do the Krugs. For whatever reason, right? If you got destroyed, here we go, you got destroyed, flash the tether, by the Yi on the Herald, then you know he's most likely taking your red buff, and you don't fight him, uh, for whatever reason. There we go, nicely done. Most likely, you want to go to the bottom side, right? Because if Yi's here, potentially coming for this. One second. Ah, <laughs> yes. Potentially coming from this side into this, or this, then we'll just freely take these. Wait for our ult to be up. Go all bottom lane. Try and get this Twitch back in the game, right? If you know you can kill the Draven yourself with your ultimate, while the Yi's taking your red side and your red side quadrant and things like this and activate the Herald down here, it's way back in the game. Now, I also don't mind this. Take this, see Yi, so let's just kill this guy, activate the Herald, touch this, push into the jungle now. Good ward by the Nar to show this. Yi says, that's fine, I'm gonna take his stuff as well. This is not bad stuff, honestly. There's there's good habits developing from these two players. Now, is the execution good? Is the map reads good? Is the uh, tracking good? No, but I'm definitely seeing some positive tendencies being developed. Now, as part of my whole jungle club thing and all the courses, the idea is to take these pieces and build you a nice Lego structure that gives you LP gains all the time, no matter the matter, no matter the changes. Problem is when you're playing like this, You've got the pieces, but you're just playing Jenga, and you're just kind of taking one piece out at a time to see what works. Hey, can I counter jungle today? First time he died. Second time he got away with it. Then he altered mid lane. Okay, that's good. Then he moved up to take a Herald. Okay, kill conversion ratio. Get kills, take objectives. Great. But he also showcased where to go. He didn't see it. Then think about it. Randomly stumbled into it. Because the Nocturne was doing it slowly. Oh, wait, we're ulting bottom lane. Excuse me. Yes, let's go. Out of base, lost our blue side, we cry. Okay, that's very sad, but I have my ult up. There's a low HP Morgana. Very good. We have... Uh, I was going to say we have Herald, because he had pink fists, but very clearly he already used it. Okay, we'll get, we'll get in there. So that's nice as well. Come out of base, recognize camps are gone. What can you do? Ah, might as well just ult someone and kill them. Scan. We don't have. 
We have wards. We're shoving. He's going to move into the lane. I like this as well. The Yi has been where he needed to be each time. And he's getting a lot of cash money gold shutdowns. And the other champion is... <laughs> I love Fierce and Master Yi. Champion is disgusting. Once he's fed, but he should never really reach this stage at all in a silver game. And I think we can see that here, but like, this is this is good from the Yi, right? He sees it, he reacts, he's making the play. Kill conversion ratio, go to the dragon. Yes, we do. Now we have pings from the blue side saying, please help me. Well, who's, who are you worried about here, Mr. Yi? Who are you worried about? Bottom lane are dead. Jungle is dead. Your bottom lane is coming back to lane. He only doesn't give a shit. Lucy paid his ultimate, right? And he's <laughs> half HP. So we're cool. There you go. Nice. Good, perfect. Well played by the Yi. What is causing the CS differential in the Nocturne? Bad level one invade. Random movements, like I'll do a camp and then do something, but it's fused with good ultimate timing. Both times was nice. Good counter jungling. Just not thinking enough about the Yi and where the Yi could be. So right now, where could the Yi be? Okay, most likely he does all the stuff here. He's gonna do this. These camps are up, this crab is up. He's going for the Raptors first. We can drive by the Raptors. There you go, right? Now, maybe you don't necessarily predict. Problem is, he's so fed at this stage. Fear. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And here, here it comes. See, here, this is where I'm confused. Mechanically, you've got flash, you've got alt, right? Why don't you space a little bit, keep the twisted fate in vision, alt him to reposition, and now you can either space glide away with your little zone of Q. Or stand and fight this guy, maybe. Obviously, we don't want to fight him, and we can flash to get away from him, but you definitely can kill Twisted Fate. So use your ult up front to kill him, reposition later, using your flash to escape and things like that. So mechanically, not so good. Not so good at all. Are we stuck with this? No, there we go. Thank you so much. So we're going to be stuck with that um, ambiance, that umbral ambiance for the rest of the game. Happens with Mordekaiser. You have a Mordekaiser, sometimes he ults, and you just stay in Brazil for the rest of the game. You have to kind of exit the replay and go back into it. Fucks. But it is how the <laughs> it's how the game is coded. Spaghetti. Right. Nocturne again takes a fight he shouldn't, but as I was saying, we see the guy take this, he goes here. What are we looking at as we go from Raptors? We're looking at this, potentially some counter jungling, right? Maybe top lane. Okay. But if the Yi goes here and you see the Yone fighting the Twisted Fate, which the Yi did, the Yi goes here. And even if his intention was to go up or to even go down for whatever reason, or even to just go back to base, he sees this fight, he rotates to it, and he's ready to go. Nocturne did react, which is great, but obviously it wasn't the best uh, use of our mechanics or ability. The, the, the Yi is up 2k gold at this point, takes the Scuttle Crab down three levels on the Mercy Yi. I mean, I applaud his commitment to the cause. <laughs> I really do. Like, he will die for this, but I'm honestly going to tell you, I don't think it's necessarily the worst outcome. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're going to lose this Herald now. But we're down two dragons. The Yi was up, had a thousand gold shut down. That's something I can use, because now we have 7.7k gold and the Yi is 8.8. .8. We just halved that gold lead that he has over us, which is huge for the 1v1s that we want to have. Build with standing. Like, this is fine, but you're behind. So if you were just going regular Stripe Breaker, Black Cleaver kind of shit, you'd probably be better off in this particular case. Death Dance, GA, all that good stuff. But he is going more squishy. So, yeah, he has damage to kill him, but he's also going to die quicker. The only bottom side versus Twisted Fate, they've moved around. Bottom lane have moved around as well. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of issues in low elo is when to choose a fight, when to farm. And the, the, the Nocturne's inability to have high CSPM. This game is not necessarily because he wasn't looking to farm. It's because he died when he could be counter jungled. He did stuff when he could be killed. He overcommitted to certain situations and died unnecessarily when he could have just been farming camps. Like, here we can kill the, 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 the Twisted Fate, get out very easily with our flash. Here we go! We get the kill there, that's the benefit of the uh, clips coming through, hugely, hugely. That's nice though, again. Yeah, you want to be farming doing your red, great. See the fight rotate, but now, what can we do? We have numbers advantage. Yone is pushing this, push this, push this, push this, come. Help the Twitch. Leave the Yi. Let him farm, help the Twitch it, try push a turret down. Do some counter jungling here if you want to, right? Get those camps back, get that CS back. What is he doing in the meantime? Hovering, loitering, not taking anything. You killed two people. And what? Went to Raptors? Great, we could have done that afterwards. So a lot of your farming, even if you have a rough early game in terms of getting that sequencing going, can be 
gotten back, as it were, just through mini wave pushes. And of course, whenever you get these picks in the mid game, just push, take, pull back, counter jungle, pull back to these, just vacuum, right? Vacuum whatever you can. But again, I think he did look to do a little bit of sequencing. Um, but just never got settled. And it's all because of that level one, which is why I hated for farming junglers. Just do your start from your own damn side, get that level four, make the right plays, right? There's no real reason for you to do these random invades and compromise yourself so severely. But the Yi did a good, good job doing it. Like he is compromised because of denial. Denial by a good play from the Yi, but also terrible play from his own part. Huge to think about. So when you're th talking about, when you, I was gonna say thinking about, but when you're talking about, should I gank or should I farm in low elo in order to win the carry to affect games, what have you learned from the Mercy Yi? When you see the opportunity to clean kills up, to rotate to situations, do it. When you see laners trading, you can get into the lane and get a kill, do it. Yes, the goal is to farm, right? But the ultimate thing is, I'm gonna farm, but when there's an opportunity to gank, I'm going to. And the Yi did a very, very, very good job of that. Honestly, very, very good job of that. And the Nocturne, bless his soul, played well around his ultimate, but he didn't quite hit either note because he overcompensated from the lack of farm for the ganks that weren't the best ganks. But ganking will always be your friend. However, in low elo, it's important to make sure your sequencing is the baseline. The Yi's farming was his baseline early. And then he started reacting to things. He farmed a little bit, did some counter jungling, reacted, got some kills. Took an objective. Farmed a little bit, saw something else, reacted, got some kills, right? Obviously this blue herald situation's a little bit lucky, but again, nice pick though. That's what we want to do. Make the pick, get the ult. Why is she out here by herself? Being ulted, spell shielded. Which is top lane. So yeah, 863 now. Definitely come back a little bit through some good picks. That's what Nocturne does, Hecarim does, even if you fall down a little bit. Easy level 3-1, he's got to be careful, he is squishy. Positioning is important. Let's see what happens. Everyone being a little bit safe here. Two people pushing bot lane. Swain moving over. Nocturne has his ultimate available. We can make the pick. We see you top lane. That's good. We see Morgana mid lane. That's good. That means I feel very comfortable going in here as necessary. Nara's killed by Swine. Swain. It's an accent thing. An EU thing. Uh, so if you're EU, you probably got that. <laughs> I hope. Anyway. Nocturne is now down. Oh, he's, I'm busy talking about accents from EU. Here we go. We hit this. We see him. And now we just go, yeah, bro. I'm two levels up. Boom. Get pigeoned. Now we get knocked back, but we don't care. Fear tether goes through here. Eclipse doing good work. Stride break is obviously safer, but for picks, this is better. I like lethality into Black Cleaver for this kind of gameplay. Ideally, we aren't two levels down on a Yi, though. Just, just pointing it out. Now we are half HP down on mana here. Yona's going to extend Prash Vision line. We have the <laughs> What on earth did I... Oh, well, it's Teemo, so... Ah, there it is. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Lovely. We love to see it. Now, because we see that, we go to do some counter jungling here. Let's drag this camp here. Let's shadow this. Obviously, Morgana is up. Twisted Fate is up. Nara is going to be available. We're a little bit limited here. We don't overcommit. But the shadow counter jungling is good. We see Twisted Fate mid lane. Good. He's a th sigh of relief. Then the vision. All right. Goes in. Alts. We hit the shadow of Umbral Destiny, which is our Q. Duskbringer. We hit the Duskbringer. How nice. And fun. Get the kill. Now it's a little bit more risky, but I think we should be fine. He's coming out of base. Take it and run. Take it and run. We're gonna, we want to alt in here. We could do. We could do, but again, I'm a little concerned now because the whole team is going to be up here. And we're not entirely sure where the, the Yi's going to be. So I like the trap. If you're like an Evelyn or Rengar, I like the trap. There we go. Ooh, we burn the flash. Get the Everfrost. No, 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 no backup. That's fine. Perfect. Perfect. Well done. Good patience. Nicely done. Yes. We applaud this play. Very good. I'm happy with this. This is a good foundation mid game for a silver player. Floating on the top side. Variants available. We could go and just do this, right? You could straight up go ahead and do this, but your ADC is the guy on the top lane. So we're going to go ahead and hit this. Strike Breaker active has now been used by the Gnar over there for farm. You only rotate to the top lane. We get the fear off, and that's another pick. This is how we do it. Move side to side. Get those picks. Create leverage for numbers advantages. And uh, make sure we don't do silly things. Warding and going for this. Obviously, if you see the Yi go down, or you think you can just straight up do this, go ahead and do it. 
Now, the Nocturne probably could have stayed just to do this straight up. But you have to look at it from the perspective of the blue team here. Let's just speed this up again. Where are we? There we go. Where's this? We see the E go down, all right? You see the, the Draven push up the mid lane. We kill the Nah. Timo TBs for this tower, which he shouldn't do. We see Morgana bottom lane. Automatically, I know you want to go back to base, but Nara's is dead. Morgana's bottom lane. Worst case scenario, they send three. I feel like we can deal with that. From our perspective, though, they dipped down, right? But Draven didn't show if he went here. He could have, right? But most likely he didn't. The Master Yi showed here. We didn't really see him dip, but, you know, if he doesn't cross, did he go this way as well? <sighs> now, we're, now we're bordering on like, okay, that's probable, I guess, but likely? Oof, I don't really think so, you know? So let's go ahead and do this right now. Let's pull the trigger on this with Nar dead, with Teemo with catching the midwave, and with Morgana bottom line, right? Gives us a little bit of an advantage. I think we could have done it here. Honestly, think we could have done it here. Okay. You went to back to base, though. I mean, I know we had cash money gold, but now your team hasn't reset. That's a critical thing. Your team hasn't reset. You have, but your team hasn't. We're just doing Gromp. He is meditating. Yoshimitsu! All right. We see the TP on the map here. Uh, Morgana's horribly out of position, so Nocturne's like, oh, I'll just kill you, which is great. Exactly right. Out of position, pull the trigger, get the kill. Now can we do the Baron, right? However... While the answer is yes, a little bit more ominous when your team hasn't based and they have four. Swain's like, oh, I guess I'm guessing I'm going to go in here. Out of position a bit. Nocturne's going to cut the back line off. Draven's out of position himself going down. There's a face out of position, so we could look to do something there, but he has holding the yellow card. Yellow card is down. Yona's going to deal with the twisted fate on the back line here. Swain's going to live. We have here the Teemo and the Nocturne running away from the Nar. He's coming with the Nar to try and kill the Swain, who tries to just play the game when he should have. Not play the game and go back to base. Good turn by the Twitch. Nice job of the Nocturne. And obviously the Yona does a good job as well. The blue team's problem, and this is why I created that whole team fighting thing, that whole section, right? And again, Jungle Club will have that section available for anyone who joins on team fighting. For silver players specifically. Silver, bronze, gold, that threshold, right? That evolution that you see because eh, we have two going deep, one running away, one looping back up here. You just created a 2-2-1 two, two, fight. That's a split push macro. Well, it shouldn't be, but it is. 2-2-1. Two, two, I wouldn't do it unless it was like a smurf game. You know, more like a 1-3-1. One, one, but you could easily leverage a 1-3-1 one, one into a 1-2-2. Two, two, depending on how the enemy comp is set up and what picks are made and where the enemy goes. But that's not really relevant to this video. The point more so is it's better to say, look, their whole team is split. I don't see Twitch. Can we do something? Or Twitch is there. Or someone's there. Can we pull the trigger? Morgana tried to do stuff when her team was not a position and died. For that, they lost. Now, obviously, they are going straight to the, the dragon here. We're going to take this blue buff. And I don't really think we need to focus on it unless it gives us 14, which is cool. It's, it does. It does. Then we ult in. Twitch flanks from the side here. Nice flank from the Twitch here. The Nocturne goes golden with a stopwatch. I love it. Yes, we die. Yes, we die. Hold on. There we go. So, not the best fight, because the problem is, if you want 14, which I think we do, this is great, so we do get it, okay? Now, you see the Twitch flanking from the bottom, you see your Swain, again, some of these mage support players are just horrific with their positioning. Why is he flanking around the top? Like, where is he going here, right? Where, where is he going and why? There's no reason for him to do this. We've got their whole team here, plus a Nar over here, right? So basically, this guy's looking to flank. You got the three pile up right here. We go boom, right? Onto the Twisted Fate, who we want to kill. The E's on the dragon doing it. The Swain is flanking for no particular reason. So as a Nocturne here, I don't mind us kind of pulling the darkness, the veil over everybody. But I'm not entirely sure we want to go this deep. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of want to wait a little bit and go with the Twitch from the side. You want to scoop around the side with the Twitch a little bit before we really fully commit. Now, fortunately, the Twitch does fully commit and get those kills, right? That's great. But the problem is now, even though three are dead, it's still the Master Yi. And the stopwatch here is really, really good by the Master Yi, uh, by the Nocturne, because in another universe where this teamfight was a little more cohesive, 
The stopwatch buys enough time for them to kill everybody else. All four are up, straight down to the Nexus and the game. Because they're obviously a bit more split, the Swain's over here, the Twitch is over here, Kimo's over here. You know, they're all one by one going to get picked off a little bit. But again, the stopwatch buys a lot of time. It's the random event that happens, right? It's the random event that happens that can throw you a game. You know, if he didn't have stopwatch, he dies a lot sooner. He doesn't buy time as they waste time waiting for him to come out of stopwatch. And if you're champion with camouflage, like say Kaisa, stopwatch, E, reposition immediately, you save. And so, important, but we lost that fight. We didn't really lose it, but you know what I mean? We lost it because we only had Teemo alive. Purely because the Swain was doing idiot things. And I feel like we altered in too deep for the Twisted Fade. Would have preferred to hold it a little bit longer, to see how the positioning developed, wait for Twitch to go in, and then with the Twitch, mow down their whole team. If that makes sense. Now, we are pretty fed. We're going to ult and just kill. See, that's a good pick there. Move in deep, shatter your team as they push the lane with the minions. You got that kill. Beautifully done. Now shift and push the turret. Come on, bot lane. Let's go. Let's go. That's a free kill. Nicely done again. Lockton did a good job coming back into this game. But as you can see, at this particular stage of the game, what was the most important lesson? We said, what's the title of this video? To get to farm to carry in low elo. What did he do in this mid to the late game? Did he farm? No. He just straight up was there for fights. He was there to push waves, there to take objectives minus the Baron a little bit. He made the right picks. All excellent decisions. So yes, while we do want to make sure we're focusing on our sequencing and our farming into that mid game, nice for your tether onto the Master Yi there, Master Yi there as well. Turn to hit the next target in front of you, which is an R. Now hit the next target in front of you, which is the Draven for the Yona. He's going to kill that. We're going to tether and stick with an ult and kill the Twisted Fate. That should be GG. Nicely done. It was not farming. Like We talk a lot about, hey, do your camps as you pass towards your team in the mid game. Make sure you're getting those the CS still. Yes. But we're behind. And if the enemy team don't use their lead to put themselves in the right position, be with your team, use numbers advantage, make the picks before the objectives, and you win the game. So, as always, in the early phases, prioritize your sequencing and structure your ganking around it. Yes? Don't over gank. Don't under farm. Both directions. Once it gets to the mid and the late game, if you're behind or your team are showing restlessness and the enemy team are just spread out, whatever, just make picks, push stuff. To make picks, push stuff. You don't need to AFQ farm in that stage. And if you notice that you're having that 4.7 CS per minute moment in your games and you're losing games like this, that's because when you should be farming in that mid game, waiting for the action to happen, because the enemy team are playing properly, you're not. You're standing around looking for fights. And when the enemy team is just completely split up, out of position, you're not pulling the trigger on those picks and then shoving objectives next. You see, you've got to make that recognition. And again, I know it's difficult to kind of deal with a gray zone, which is what this is. There's no gank only, farm only. It's always a gray zone. Situational. And as always, not always one play style for one person, and everyone plays a different champion with a different style, but the knockdowns early definitely could have had him another 40 to 50 CS and should have bad decisions cost him. The Yi did a good job early, and then later just kind of ran around and died, running in and mispositioning. So you had the inverse example from both games. Thank you very much for watching. For those who joined in the Vakayu Jungle Club, I look forward to seeing you there in that private Discord. As always, I will see you all in the next one.